So before we actually start sending notifications, we need some sort of authentication. So we want to make sure that anyone who's sending a notification has signed in. And we're going to use Firebase's inbuilt authentication. It's really simple and really easy. And we're going to make users just sign in with Google. The first thing we want to do is go to our project on Firebase and go to authentication. And all we need to do is just enable users being able to sign in with Google. And it's really easy as everything is. Just click set up sign up methods, then we click Google, edit, and we just click enable and save. And that is it. So people can now just sign in with Google. But obviously we need to, you know, do something on our end. So let's go back here and let's go back to our code. The first thing we want to do is just create an actual button that people can click to sign in. If we go to our index, if we just come here and all we have to do is create a simple button. Just give it an ID of sign in, and then I'll just say sign in. Then we can go to our main JavaScript file, which is over here. And let's just uh, create a reference to it. So sign in button, we just do get element by ID, sign in. Very simple. Then let's create a function to sign in. So function sign in and what this function is going to do is just use the sign in function on firebase auth so we have the reference to firebase auth here so all we have to do is sign in and we want to do it with a pop-up right so what we want is that a window will pop up so that the user can sign in and then when they close it'll go back so sign in with pop-up and we need to pass in which provider we want. So we want to use Google sign in here. So we pass in a new Firebase .auth .google auth provider. And that just says that we want to use sign in with Google. Then let's just hook both of these things up together. So add event listener, stop click, and then sign in function. So now let's go and actually test it out. So let's just refresh the page. Now we have our sign in button. Then we click this and then we have the pop up that happens. So let's just take a little bit of time and then we choose what account that we want to sign in with. I'm just going to use this account. And then it goes back here. So we've actually signed in. Let me just open up the console. We didn't console log anything. We haven't actually done anything to check that the user has signed in, but it's actually been successful. So how do we actually know that the user has signed in? And what we need to do is listen for the authentication state has changed. So there's actually a special event listener that we can do, which is on this Firebase auth variable. So let's just add this here. Firebase auth on auth state changed. And when authentication state has changed, we need to do something. So I'm going to create a function that says handle auth state changed so let's just add that here function and what is passed is a user so what we can do is just console.log user so let's just go back and see that anything has happened so let's refresh the page and we can see that we have a user object that's now being console logged here we can see display name is Erie, and then this is the email that is being passed. But let's just change this a bit. So this auth state changed. It's called if the user has logged in or not logged in. So first, we just need to check that if there is actually a user. Then we can just say console log user, and if not, console log no user. So let's just delete that and we're going to add some more code to just handle the difference between like a user being signed in or not later but let's just go back and refresh yeah so we still have the user of course so let's actually just add a sign out button so we can just test the difference and of course we have to let the user be able to sign out as well so let's go back here and let's just create another button 
sign out and sign out. Let's go back here. The sign out button. Oh, we have to create it first, of course. Equals to sign out. Then sign out button. The add event listener. Click, and we're going to create a function called sign out. Function sign out. And this is really really simple. All we have to do is call sign out on Firebase auth. So Firebase auth dot sign out. And that will log out the user. So let's just go back and test this. Refresh the page. So we already signed in, as we know. All we have to do is click the button sign out, and there's no user anymore. So if I refresh the page, it'll just say no user. So this state right now isn't really ideal. We don't want to show both sign in and sign out buttons when the user is signed in or when the user is signed out. We want to show them conditionally. So if we just go back, we can just hide and show the elements based on the state. So I'm going to go back to the HTML here and let's just put a hidden attribute here. So if you're not aware, the hidden attribute can be used to just hide any element on the page. It essentially just adds display none. So if we go back, we can actually see what's going on here. <clears throat> so we're just going to hide the sign out button by default and just change the state depending on if the user is logged in or not. So here we have, if there's a user, what we want to do is sign in button that set attributes. So we want hidden to be true. And then for sign out button, we just want to remove that attribute of hidden. And we can just copy this. And then if the user is signed in, let's just change that around. So let's just go back and see how that works here. So there's no user, so the sign in button shows. So let's click sign in. And this should just probably automatically take me back because I already signed in. So when there is a user, you can see that the sign out button is there. So pretty simple, but just managing the states. So that is authentication with Firebase.